this is a video demonstration for modeling tax loss carry forward under DCF model. Some firms, they can accumulate losses to reduce their current tax liability. So, which means that this profit before tax may be further reduced and the real tax liability is taxable profit here. And the taxable profit here will be some gain this year further reduced by the tax law carry forward, which is in this case. And once the tax laws carry forward were some partially deducted from the profit before tax and this amount should be further reduced. And the taxes that paid will be therefore based on taxable profit times the tax rate. Effective tax rate will be profit before uh, the tax payment here divided by the profit before tax here. Now I have um, basically demonstrated the idea and it's the implementation issue. So for this question, the firm has an initial accumulated tax loss of 100. So we want to hard code 100 here such that it will affect in the model down here. We don't want to hard code everything here in the model. So a convenient uh, things that offers by the setting is that if we want to further change the model, we can just change the assumption here instead of going into the model and change the formula. And also that we want to have a systematic formula that can apply to all of the sales in future years. So although we can figure out that, okay, this year, the tax loss is, uh, uh, is this amount and then no tax payment to be paid here because uh, they're, they're probably will uh, not having a positive number for the profit before tax at all. So we, you know, this is a manual process. We want to automate all of the uh, things here. So we want Excel to decide whether to pay tax or not and how much tax loss will be uh, accumulated or, or uh, maintained in this account and to determine whether there is a taxable profit or not and the change of effective tax rate. So we'll start with profit before tax. This is the most straightforward one. It will be just the sum of all the previous items in the, in the income statement. And I'll drag it all the way over. The next one is the taxable profits. So in year one, the company is making loss. So the taxable profits, you can tell it now, is zero. So taxable profit, it's, a, uh, it's, it's supposed to be a profit. So it can be an active number because the tax authority will not pay the firm for anything. So it will be the firm that pays the tax authority. So therefore it has to be the minimum value here will be zero. So uh, it can be any positive number. So therefore uh, we want to set up a maximum function. Uh, this is a maximum function here between 23 plus 29. So you'll be comparing if there is any remaining tax loss carry forward after uh, subtracted it from profit before tax. And this tax loss carry forward, if I show you here, it's already a negative number. So that's why we use a plus here in the max equation. So we want to subtract it from the profit before tax. In this case, since profit before tax is a negative number, so um, it will be, uh, so adding these two together will be an even more negative number. So it's not going to be greater than zero. So that's why um, Excel so shows that the maximum taxable profit is zero. So no tax to be paid. And we can figure out here how much tax to be to be paid. So since tax is an expense, so we should use an uh, add a minus sign. It's either zero or the tax rate in it times the taxable profit. And the effective tax rate will be equals to the tax over profit before tax and tax is an expense. So we need to add a minus sign here for calculating tax rates to neutralize the sign. And uh, we also need a formula for calculating tax loss carry forward from previous years. And here, the tax loss carry forward for year two should be um, this loss of $18 in year one plus the loss carry forward from previous years. So it will be the minimum, these plus these, zero. So why should it be minimum? Um, because you see that the tax loss carry forward can not be a positive number. It's a negative representing that it's a tax loss or a tax credits remained in the account. And if we use all of the, those tax laws, then that means we have no further tax laws carry forward. So therefore, um, the, the, uh, it should be zero um, as the boundary and or a negative number here. Okay, so now I can drag it all the way to the right.
you can see that the firm started to earn profit in year two, but the profit is just $20, so um, which means that it can be fully reduced to zero. The taxable uh, profit can be fully reduced to zero. So um, the tax loss carry forward to the next year will be 118 subtracting 20, which is 99. And 99 is some uh, negative value here, so um, it will be uh, smaller than zero. So the output uh, value here will be a negative 99. And the taxable profit here is um, will be therefore uh, the profit earned this year deducting from the tax loss carry forward and 65 is uh, still kind of less than 99. So uh, the tax, uh, the profit before tax can be fully reduced to zero. So the taxable profit is therefore zero. If the tax rate is therefore zero, no tax needs to be paid it because um, all um, profits in year two and year three has been deducted. And finally, starting in year four, the firm earned a big profit, 118. And um, the firm can use 118 subtracting the $99 of tax loss carry forward, reduce 118 all the way to 84, and pay tax just based on $84. So the tax year is $84 times the 40% tax rate. And this number is something greater than zero because um, um, the taxable profit is not zero anymore. So it's an expense, so it's a negative value. And therefore, the effective tax rate, instead of being 40, it's uh, 29% because um, not all of the profit made in year four is tax because of this tax benefit or um, the, the tax treatment here about tax loss carry forward. And final year, uh, 177 profit, a big profit in this year. And does the firm has uh, any tax loss carry forward? And in fact, that's it does. In fact, that it does not. So here, uh, no more uh, reduction um, to reduce the profit before tax. So uh, here, the taxable profit equals exactly the same as the profit before tax. Tax loss carry forward has been fully applied in year four. So therefore, the effective tax rate here equals exactly to the uh, flat tax rate. Now here, when uh, this calculation here for paying different taxes will therefore affect our calculation of free cash flow. And uh, this is because we want to use the effective tax rate to calculate the um, tax adjustment for interest earned and interest payment. So it will be using equals the interest on debt, interest on debt in the financial in the income statement three, and we want to add it back. So this times. one minus the tax rate. Enjoy. So this interest payment here should be then expense. It's in negative value. So we want to add a minus sign here. It shows up as a positive value because um, you're going to see that the debt level is decreasing and there's a lack of data of the initial debt. So uh, that is uh, a missing value here, so we don't want, so the formula should still be um, adding back the expense here, pay as the interest payment. And here it will be subtracting after tax interest on cash and marketable security. Interest earned on marketable securities is an income traded in the income statement, so we want to subtract it times one minus tax rate. So I would just drag it all the way to the right. All right, that completes this question.